So if you're watching this video, you most likely want to get a tech job in 2024. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new on this channel, my name is Chisong and I'm a software engineer and YouTuber. If you're not new to this channel, welcome to the family and please do not hesitate to click on the subscribe button. So if you're watching this video, you most likely want to get a tech job in 2024. You've learned how to code, you probably have a CS degree, you have completely gotten into the tech space, this video is definitely for you. And if you've not really gotten into the tech space and you would love to learn a pet skill this year, watch out for my next video on that. But for this video, we're going to be focusing on how you can land your first job or literally any job in the tech space. So the first thing I would like to point out is this period is a very challenging period in the tech industry because one they have been laying off staffs from different companies two companies are trying to cut down on cost and there is this like hiring freeze going around in the industry three is the whole AI buzz where companies are most likely letting go of staff because they want to invest in other AI startups or AI product industry is not so welcoming at this period but should we be scared I don't think so because there's definitely a way around everything no matter how challenging the situation is so let's get to it the first step from my experience having one-on-ones with people I would like to point out five different steps or five different things that you can try out if you want to get a tech job the first thing i would like to point out is being disciplined and having like a structured lifestyle moving forward to where you want to get the job now the thing with the tech industry now is that the industry is flooded with people that have experience the industry is flooded with both engineers that have been laid off from google facebook microsoft amazon they're in the same job market with you looking for a job and so you have to be very disciplined with the kind of things that you're learning and you also have to have like a structured plan on how you're going to go about getting this job what do i mean this is not the time to say okay i want to be a front-end developer and i also want to be a data scientist they don't have any correlation so whatever you're learning if you're fully in the front-end space stick to that space and target your applications towards roles that are hiring for front-end engineers and if you're in the data science space stick to that space and try as much as possible to learn everything that you need to know in that space the thing with applying for jobs is that if you have direction you're going to get a job really quick but if you're in that phase where you're not sure of the field that you want to go into then i feel like you should take a step back and actually do like some certain kind of self-assessment to understand the field that you actually want to thrive in because if you're looking for a job in a confused state you're definitely going to be wasting your time i always advise people whatever field that you get into in the tech industry strive to be the best person in that field do not be mediocre there is no room for being mediocre learn as though you want to be the best in that field look for people that are doing really great in that field and try to shadow them so this is where the discipline and the um, structured learning or structured path comes in moving over to my next point which is upskilling now the thing with the job market now is that it's very unstable in such a way that if you want to um hire a web developer or hire a front-end developer you'll be seeing the job requirements front-end developer with a little bit of machine learning experience now if you ask me front-end development and machine learning doesn't have any correlation but companies are looking at roles and they are padding responsibilities on those roles so how i would advise people to upskill or how i upskill is I go to different company websites, I go to about 10 company websites and search for like the role that I'm currently doing at my current job and I see what these people are hiring for. So from there you would see that there are some new skills companies want people to have but you would also see that this is how or this is the direction companies are hiring in 2024. So always try to add to your knowledge, this is not the period for you to be um, saying that you want to build a to-do list or build a web application if you got into tech in 2016 that can fly honestly you can do that get an interview i mean by now you won't be a senior engineer because you must have gotten a job by that time but for now companies do not look for mediocre things people want to see huge projects mind-blowing projects 
projects that matter people want to see you build things so as you're upscaling try to build things that also matter try to build things that you can be proud of join a hackathon you cannot build on your own get into a group and build together write articles design architecture how i see it is if i want to move a step higher in my career i start doing what the people that are in that level are doing so i'm more prepared so don't say oh when i get um when i get my first job i'm going to start thinking about code quality code structure i'm going to start thinking about how to design like architectural diagrams start doing those things now when companies see that they see that you're ready to be employed now the third thing we're going to be looking out for is networking no matter how much you know if you do not know somebody that can get you to the next level that you want to be in i don't know how that is going to work for you for building a solid network you have a network one way or the other if you have more than 30 friends male or female different age groups you have a solid network how i see networking or how i see building a network is like think of a spider web for instance different webs are connected to different things that's how i see my network even if i don't know the ceo of a particular company i know somebody that knows somebody that knows the ceo and that is automatically my network when people think about networks it's you think of it like okay for me to have a solid network i should have the phone number of the cto of this company i should have the phone number of the ceo of this other company it doesn't work like that sometimes when you're just starting out in your career so while job searching networking is very very important how do you do that network number one you go for events and when you go for events don't be looking for swags that they will share or food that you eat carry your card with you look for people look for hiring managers look for engineers in different companies let them know the kind of job that you're looking for i'll tell you i'll tell you guys a little bit of backstory i went for an event once and someone reached out to me and said that he's looking for a quality assurance role and at that point in time my company wasn't really hiring quality analyst or qa analyst and i told him okay can i get your contact and he gave me a card and i kept that card with me Two months, three months later, my company was hiring for a QA role, but not in this location. And he was the first person I thought of. So this is what networking does. Tell people what you need, and they will definitely have you in mind when they're close to that opportunity. They can literally just call you and say, oh, this opportunity is open, are you interested? Other ways to form your network is through social media. Engage with people that you think can get you to where you want to be. Be on the lookout on LinkedIn. Most hiring managers, I feel like if I'm looking for a job, I will connect with almost all the hiring managers I know at probably international or local companies. Most hiring managers give some people heads up when a company is trying to hire. They can say, oh, we are looking to fill a vacancy for this role. We're not hiring now, but we'll be hiring next month. Now tell me, if you're not following that person on LinkedIn or social media, how would you know? That they are hiring for that role so you have to be very very aware so that you know when opportunities come up other things around networking is through referrals now how referrals work is me personally i will not refer you if i don't know you right or except somebody that knows you has given me like a portfolio about you then i can think about referring you're meant to put yourself out there in such a way that people know that this is what you do and this is what you can offer the current job I'm working at now was gotten through a referral and I only got that referral because I was active on LinkedIn and people were watching what I was doing so if you are not putting yourself in a position that people know that you exist and this is the kind of job you can offer nobody is going to notice you nobody is going to even feel like you you exist as a whole person so try to go the referral route if you're looking for a job now the last thing i'll like to point out is interviewing skills so if you've gone through all the stress of getting an email the recruiter has reached out to you and you're finally meant to do like a coding test or like an interview and you flop it that's not a smart move so i'll always tell people that you should keep your interviewing skills warm make sure that you're constantly practicing your coding skills you're constantly practicing for data structures and algorithms if it's an engineering role if you're constantly applying for jobs you don't know the day a company might reach out to you and say oh we'd like to interview you and if you're not ready you're going to flop 
that opportunity so interviewing is a different ball game honestly i think it's like a whole course on its own it has like technicals the technical side the behavioral side the design side and just the soft skills communication side so when you're applying for jobs you should also make sure that your interviewing skills are kept warm if it means you've been on this code every day one question a day that's fine mock interviews are good too so yeah guys we've come to the end of this video the few steps that I highlighted first is being disciplined understanding what you want to know in the field of tech and having a structured learning path to getting a job second is upskilling try to add to your knowledge to what you already know and look for what other companies are hiring for and try to learn that as well but don't forget that the fundamentals are still important third is networking build a solid network build valuable network make friends with people that can take you to a level higher than you already are now and the last thing is interviewing always prepare for interviews always make sure that you're ready for interviews make sure that your interviewing skills are warm guys this is 2024 and i know that if you put your head down and spend an intentional amount of time searching for a job upskilling and being that valuable person any organization would want you're definitely going to get the job this year i know that the season is hard companies are laying people off and it's very discouraging but just know that you've already started the game and you have to continue it's kind of challenging to get your foot into the door but trust me once you get your first tech job the other jobs that you're going to get in the industry is going to be like this you are not going to have any issues because you have the experience you have the the roadmap in your head of how you can go about it you're learning new skills thank you for watching this video i hope i have been able to encourage you and share some tips that i had in my head i cannot wait to hear success stories from you guys this year and yeah see you guys in the next video bye